This Kannada love story will crush your heart. And not just once, twice. Hello guys, I'm Nona Prince and I have seen the Kannada film SSE, Sapta Sagada Che Elo, Side A, and I have seen Side A and Side B both. And this, this is, is our, our review. review. Now, because director Hemant Rao decided to divide his story in two films, I thought let's do the opposite. Let's review both the films within same video. So let's start with Side A. Now I'm late to watching the film. I've already heard a lot of people call it poetry. And yes, it is. It's true love on display. It feels like you're dipped in the magic of it. We just don't see these two characters. We feel them, the connection between them. the understanding it's a fantasy it's a dream for many to have that we all want it in our lives and this film personifies it you know the idea of a soulmate and i love that nothing in the film is filmy or over dramatic everything is kept real in capital and the credit for that has to go to the writing and the direction we never see how they met we never see how they fell in love there's no back story at all most films would always show that because that's how we'll able to connect with them but no this film depends on the interactions between them when they're already in love and because of that it feels like we know these people because we have seen them doing the mundane things just spending time with each other and that tells you more about them than having a exposition or a back story or a flashback there's no spoon own feeding and the big reason for that to happen organically are the actors their performances are so natural the chemistry between them it never feels like they are two actors performing it feels like i'm watching two real people and that has to be the biggest compliment i can give rakshit chetty as manu like i always knew is a great actor but he just surprised me in this film with the control he had on the character there's always a temptation you know to play the character have some you know bits to make him more charismatic all the girls watching the film will fall for the character you know to play the character with some attitude a bit of show off trying to prove why she chose me why i am special there is nothing like that he plays it so naturally that he doesn't care about anyone else he just cares about her that's his only world and he delivers it so well to make a mark without doing a lot it's very difficult and he pulls it off elegantly but the bigger surprise was rukmani vasant as priya i'm just blown away by her performance this is the first time i'm watching her and i was blown away like i fell in love with the character of priya why and that doesn't happen every time because there are very few films which get a character so well it's not just about looks you're falling in love with a fictional character which feels like exist in real world because it's whole because everything i know about this character feels so real the way it's perform- form the way it's written it feels like a complete person that can exist somewhere in the world and i am in love with that the way hemant rao has used visuals to elevate this narrative the way it's shot the use of colors he has created iconic imagery that will always stay in our head we'll always remember this film for it you know the fingers crossing or them holding hands the cassette tape the tiffin she used to take to the jail all of these things are characters in itself all of these things are moments they have meaning to them for manu that tape is the only memory of priya priya finally deciding not to go to the jail throwing the tiffin off it has a visual significance the color theme for side a is blue we see different shades of blue throughout the film the sea the sky the blue wall in the house the blue clothes they wear and as the film progresses those colors get muted and when those hopeful moments arise the colors are back they pop but again they go away and by the end the red color takes over which is the theme for side b and how does that happen the red color of bride that priya is wearing as she is getting married getting away from mannu and the red color of blood on mannu signifying the end of the relationship the other thing that makes this love story stand out is that there are no external obstacles or villains like the parents don't want them to get married or the society is not accepting and all of that no one can stop them from being together just themselves it's the situation they are in and the actions they come it that led to them breaking apart and you see it unfold how mannu is getting desperate they both have dreams together they want to live those dreams but there is a rush mannu quickly wants to get there he wants to run towards it and because of that he takes a shortcut which backfires the things you do for love and by the end you realize that the future which you were trying to plan and you know wanted to rush towards was not important the important was the present to live in that moment to be together but because you were worried so much about the future you let the present itself go away and now you 
have nothing left. So in side B, I want to see how that is tackled. Now, one big surprise for me was how the jail was shown in the film because it was shown with so much detail and nuances. The way it explores that world, the impact of confinement on people, the bad practices. This film is one of the best depiction of that. And somewhere I was worried that the love story will get compromised and this jail thing will take over. But that didn't happen. The love story was the core. I've seen Hemant Rao's previous films and this has to be the best till now until I watch side B. At the end, we do get a glimpse of side B. You get a rough idea what it's gonna be about. Both of them moving on in their lives and then they will meet. But it's not a spoiler. It's the experience you'll have watching the film. And that experience was painful, but in a good way. Actually, not in a good way, but you know what I mean. I feel side B continues the same story but it's done in a different way. It just feels like a different film the way it's made. Hemant Rao has just delivered big time. Side B just surpassed every expectation I had. And in this one, we just don't continue that love story from the first one, but we also get another love story done so well and an infinite amount of pain by the end. The first thing I noticed, just like Side A, this film doesn't follow any cliches, not at all. The moment you think you know what's gonna happen now, where the story is going, Nope, it's not going there at all. The DNA of these films stay the same. We see Manu's life post the prison and we see the growth in him. Not just physically, but mentally how he has changed over time. How the 10 years prison life has changed his character. And Rakshit Shetty had a lot of heavy lifting to do in this film. This film belongs to him. You feel like you're watching a beast, but Manu is somewhere within him. It's like from the film Beauty and the Beast, where the prince is hiding within the beast. We see he is physically stronger. He can now fight back. He is not gullible anymore, but he still carries the charm of Manu. The way he interacts with another woman. His undying love for Priya and the actions he commit for that. I liked how the film didn't shy away from showing that after that prison life, it's natural that someone will feel aroused. They have physical needs. And how beautifully that is portrayed. The guilt Manu carries doing the act because you always imagined it with Priya. And then through that, bring an other character to the narrative and not compromise on it. That character is not just there to serve Manu, but has her own arc in the film. She is a prostitute, but she also has self-respect. And the film gives her that due respect. She get those scenes that she deserves in the film. Choitra Char, who played Surbi, she was wonderful. From the writing to her performance, everything worked. And that feels impossible that another women character shines out so well when a character like Priya already is in the film. And even with Priya's husband, the cliche thing which the film kind of hints at the start, he's a wrong guy for Priya, he cannot do anything, he's a failure, he's a loser. And that's the image Manu wants to, you know, print in his mind for him, that he can replace him, that he can still have the life with Priya and he goes on to that path but the film again subverts the expectation. He's actually not a loser. He's a character in itself. He's going through a lot in his life and that shows you that the film doesn't want to take any easy route. Again staying true to its nature. The most satisfying thing inside B was when Manu was giving it back to the villains, to the people who did wrong. Be it Ashut Kumar's character, be it that rich family, or be it that main villain, played wonderfully well by Ramesh Indra. He was so good, so menacing. He portrayed evil so well with dimensions. That line of Tom and Jerry fits so well with these two characters. And with Priya's character, you know, I was not sure how will the film proceed with it. Will we see her a lot? Will we not see her a lot? How will be that character used now? And it was very fascinating how how Hemant Rao, you know, pulled it off. Because side B is more from the perspective of Manu, we see Priya from far away mostly. We see how she is living, what she is going through. But we never get an answer what she thinks about Manu. She never references it. She never meets him in the film. And that is, you know, hard thing to digest. That we never get to see that. That's a turmoil. And we see how there is a well-wisher looking upon her, observing her from very far away, trying to make her life better. It's like an invisible force that exists that's helping her out making her life better. And that's the turmoil, right? That she will never know who that force was. And I think it was a brilliant decision not to have them meet. Like we get a scene, which was an imagination, which I'll get to later in the video. But on part of Manu, that would have been really selfish to barge into a life out of nowhere after so many years. Because in side A, we saw how she gave everything. She didn't care about her life. Every week she was coming to the jail to meet him. She was trying everything in her control to get him out of there. And she was willing to do it forever. She'll wait forever. But Manu didn't want that. The mother didn't want that. And she had to stop. She had to let it go. So now it was Manu's turn. How far he can go. 
the best thing in that situation was to let go move on she is living her life now you made a mistake things went horribly wrong the situation was not right all these things happened maybe it wasn't meant to be so just move along in your life let her be at peace with what she has but he cannot move because he has been living those 10 years just listening to her he was just living for that he couldn't let her go he couldn't have a future without thinking about her and the only end that was possible for him was what we got in the film that by the end before he stop existing he gets this vision that everything will be all right he gets to walk with her near the shore which he always dreamt of yes it was a hallucination it was not real but at least his soul got a satisfying end and that's the heart breaking moment you have to live with for me this love story is more tragic than you know a romeo juliet and all of that whenever i think about these films or these characters it will only bring pain 100% pain what if they had met what would have happened how things would have unfolded we will never know that incomplete story will always stay with us that's the power of this film and it is a bitter sweet ending because other characters get to move on get to have a better life surbhi is now becoming a doctor priya is living a better life at least when mannu left forever he left the place a little better and isn't that a desire we all should look up to and with all this what really took this film to the next level was the technical brilliance just like the first film the cinematography the change in lighting now this film is happening in the modern era we see people wearing masks you know covid has happened but we also see that through the lighting through the sets now we are living in a city full of concrete the lights used are neon give you a sense of the future they are very dark and sharp colors compared this to a first film we see a lot of greenery we see buildings are coming up they are in development so a lot of effort has it put into where the scenes are shot there are so many reflection shots from a mirror from water lying on the ground and that creates some amazing imagery as i talked about that imagination dream sequence where they both actually meet and the way it happened felt like oh they actually met but the way the scene continued it felt really abnormal like will they react so normally meeting each other after 10 years no but then there is some tension between them and i was unable to tell is it dream imagination or real and of course the way it unfolds is so well done the wall behind coming apart then he's inside his small room creating that claustrophobia and the walls are coming towards him trying to crush him then even at the ending the surreal scene that's created it is superb there are so many long takes that done so well that an action scene we get in the end the camera just follows them it says at one point the action is just unfolding in front of us all of it is done to the perfection then the intercutting we constantly hear you know from the tape that pre had left and over time you know that has become a little rough when manu is trying to find out more about priya's life it feels like an investigation the way they break down how manu is finding out about priya and her life him entering the house meeting the kid get to know the husband and the intercutting constantly it feels very much like you know how nolan edits his films and that actually makes this part very refreshing because otherwise if it's very linear it would feel very boring and he's actually stalking her and the way the film you know pictureizes that there's always this distance between them and we see that you know some movies show that they are just you know so close by just standing near each other this film doesn't do that at all every moment we see them on screen together or somewhere close by there's a long distance between them and to find such places to shoot and to create a distance is very difficult logistically so you know kudos to them to putting that effort these are the small small details that matter that makes this film you know better it elevates it i would say even the makeup for rishabh shetty you can tell that he was beaten up 10 years ago the scars he have his nose feels it is deformed so small small details that matter attention to detail music is a big part of the film and is lovely but for me you know i am a very lyrics guy and if i cannot you know remember the lyrics or understand the lyrics i will not remember the song so that's a problem for me but the music throughout both the films was amazing these two films this tragic love story will be remembered for decades because i don't remember watching a love story so detailed so real so heartbreaking but still you want to feel it you want to experience it you want to feel the pain that's the biggest achievement of this film and hey mantrao has killed it now where does ssc stand in my list of best films 2023 you can find out here in this video what do you think do it me in the comments below and i will see you next time